Before we get into our training video, if by chance you found this video as a recommended video on YouTube, this training video is actually part of an extensive Corel Draw for Beginners training series from AdvancedTShirts.com. We have developed dozens of videos and we also have available on our website downloadable work along files that you can work with in Corel Draw while you're working through the training videos. Easily the best and fastest way to learn. If these videos are helpful to you, please take a second to add a like to the video and subscribe to our YouTube channel so you can be notified when we upload new video content. And of course, in the comment section below, you can post your questions or your Corel Draw video tutorial requests. In this session, we're going to get into the interactive fill tool and fountain fills. Here you can see the fountain fill property bar. I'll select this rectangle object. Then I'll come over to the toolbox, left click on the interactive fill tool. Then I'll come up here and I'll switch to fountain fill. And the properties bar will change. Now here I have a couple of different options. Here's the current fountain fill. It applied it automatically from the left to the right, going from the color to white. We have a linear fountain fill, as we can see down here, and our different fountain fill types. We have a elliptical fountain fill, conical fountain fill, and a rectangular fountain fill. Here we have the node color. Now this is a color node that's white. This is the starting node. This is the ending node. This is the midpoint or the gradient midpoint for the color. And you can left click, hold down and adjust that. Next we have the transparency for the node. Now we can do all of this through the properties bar. However, if we look at this smooth which is turned off, we'll turn that on, and we can see a bit of a difference there in the smoothing. Here we have the acceleration, which is basically, if I take that and move that, you'll see it's like working with the gradient adjustment that's interactive. Now, the acceleration can be adjusted, and we can also adjust the gradient midpoint right there. Here we have copy fill, and here we have edit fill. And edit fill is just going to open up our edit fill dialog box. Now I prefer to do this interactively as opposed to working through the property bar. So I'm going to take this rectangle, I'll delete that, go to the rectangle tool, create a new rectangle, and I'll left click in the color palette to fill that with red. Then I'll go to the interactive Fill tool, select that. Let's say I want to go at an angle, similar to what I'm working with here. I'll just left click, hold down, start dragging. And when I release, that will be my gradient fill. If I want to add a new color node, I can double click and I will add a new color node. I can adjust that color for that color node here through the node color editor. I can bring that up into a yellow, like that. And I can also add transparency to that if I want to. So it would be partially transparent. I can double click to add additional color nodes. Double left click. That adds a node. I can change that color back to a red. And we'll close this. I can also go to my color palette, left click, on any color, hold down, drag, and release that on a color node, and it'll be changed to that color. If I want to delete this color, I can double click on that with a left click, left double click, that'll delete that color node. I can also change the angle of the fountain fill with the fountain fill rotation node or the starting and ending nodes. Then you can see how I can change the angle of the fountain fill, and this is a linear fountain fill. I could left click, hold down, drag this out, and you can see how that changes the gradient 
or the fountain fill. Left click this color node, slide that down and make that adjustment there. So if you practice with this, you can add and remove nodes, change colors, etc. And even as I showed earlier, as you could left click and drag a color from the color palette, you can also just left click on any color and that will change the selected color node to that color. Scrolling down here, we can see we have once again linear, elliptical, conical, and rectangular. Here's a racing design, and the text has orange, yellow, red, yellow, orange. Now, if there's a fountain fill, and I have the interactive fill tool selected, all I have to do is click on it, and I could edit that fill. Let's say I wanted to stretch this out a little bit. This is very easy to set up based on the techniques we're using up here. Here you can see this bolt giving it a metallic look using a fountain fill. Going from darker to lighter grays, and I believe there's kind of like cyan in that as well. Also, you can create objects for shading and highlighting. The grapes in this simple grape vector graphic are just a fountain fill inside of an ellipse. We'll zoom in, and I'm going to go and give this a fountain fill, so I'll left click and hold down. I'm already in the radial mode. Now I don't have that selected, so I'm working with another object. What did I have selected that I'm changing? Looks like nothing. I want to make sure I select that. Left click and select before I apply the fountain fill. Now I'll left click, hold down, I'll be in linear now I can change that to the ellipse or radial fountain fill. And we want to double click on that, make sure we go to the ellipse. There we go. Just clicked off and clicked back on, change the ellipse. And we can shape that, move this up into here bring this down that way and you can see that we can give our grape a nice highlight that would be there and we could adjust that color come here maybe we'll want to make that less of an intensity and just move that tint back into the pure color a little bit more click off and there is the grape with the shading and highlighting and then I can just simply come in and start adding all these shapes into the grape vector graphic and it would have the shading and the highlighting from the fountain fill in the grapes giving depth to the clip art. So we'll wrap here concerning the fountain fill and the interactive fill tool and we'll continue in our next video session.